Let me start here. You're coming off that win over the Panthers in a game where they had a chance to tie it late, but they missed that 65-yard field goal attempt. I've got to ask, what was going through your head as they lined up for that kick and then as it left Joey Sly's foot? Yeah, I mean, I think going into the game, we knew he had a big leg and that he was capable of, you know, kicking it that far. Obviously, that would have been a, a record breaker, which would have been pretty crazy to go in. So, um, you know, I was more shocked to be if it were to go in than when it missed. I wasn't I wasn't that surprised. So, uh, you know, it was just a situation that we were in that we were able to come out on top. The thing about that kick, Alex, was it would have been from a different location if it were not for a couple of plays. On second and 10 from your 38, the Panthers called for a screen, which you blew up, allowing two teammates to finish it off for a one-yard loss. What did you see on that play? Yeah, um, you know, I think in those situations that, uh, you know, it kind of goes back to my football IQ. I knew they they had to get some sort of play, and, um, you know, it's on film. the, The drive screen kept showing up, and, I knew they were going to run it at some point during the game, and uh, I was able to diagnose it and uh, make a good read on it and slow it down. Alex Anceloni is joining us. You did just that. And then on third down, Marcus Davenport had an eight-yard sack of Teddy Bridgewater, and that pushed it from a 57-yard field goal to a 65-yard field goal. I mean, it seems pretty self-evident, but I'll ask you anyway, just how big was that play in that moment? Yeah, it was huge. Um, You know, to get one to get that momentum and then, uh, you know, we saw the kick, how close it was. Uh, you know, every yard and every inch really matters in that situation with a kicker like that. So, you know, I think that looking back on it in the moment, it was huge. And then looking back on it, it was even bigger. So, Alex, given how you guys, well, given how everybody feels about Teddy Bridgewater and how much respect he commands around the league, what was it like to go up against him after he spent time with you guys in New Orleans? It was fun. Uh, obviously, he's a, he's a really good quarterback in this league. And uh, he's a really good competitor, um, you know, but it brought, brought back some old memories of him being on scout team or during training camp going against him. Uh, you know, and it's just he's just a really good dude, and I think everyone around the country sees that, uh, you know, just on social media. And, uh, you know, it was, it was just a fun time, and uh, I'm glad we were able to come out on top. I was going to say, it's always fun when you win. Alex Anzalone yeah. joining us. Then on the other side of the ball, the offense found out that Michael Thomas and Emmanuel Sanders were going to miss the game. And as a result, the coaches were up until 3 o'clock in the morning on Friday, changing out the game plan. Then they come out, and they don't punt the entire game. So what's it say about the offense and the coaches that something like that happens and you still find a way to win? Yeah, you know, the adaptability of that is, is huge. Uh, you know, it's you know, when you lose two of your best receivers, um, you know, and Emmanuel later in the week, it wasn't like it was, uh, we knew after Wednesday or Thursday practice that he wasn't going to be with us, uh, you know, change the game plan up and then have young guys step up like Marcos Callaway and have a huge game. It's, you know, it just shows the depth of our team and, um, you know, the adaptability like I referenced. You know, I'm glad you mentioned that because I was going to say that overcoming obstacles is nothing new this season. As an example, there was that win in Detroit when the team was down 14 nothing and missing six starters. You had that 17-point comeback against the Chargers, and you mentioned depth and adaptability. Like, I'm curious, how much of that is about talent and depth, and then how much of that is just about grit and mental toughness? Yeah, I think it, it's a combination of it all. You know, you have to have the players to make the plays uh, that you want them to, and then, you know, you have to have the mental toughness to – you know, not let a 14-point deficit or 17-point deficit to phase you and just take it one play at a time and one series at a time and uh, chop away at a lead. Obviously, it's great to, you know, have the lead from the jump, but, you know, when you're in those situations, those really shows, you know, what kind of team you have. You know, it seems like, Alex, on some level that there's been a season within the season or a couple of seasons within the season. Like you open up with that win over Tampa Bay, and then you drop games to the Raiders and Packers. And at that point, the team was committing more penalties than they would have liked. So where was the team at mentally and emotionally at that point of the season? Yeah, I think, you know, Coach does a good job of, you know, having us move, up, move to the next game. Obviously, we had to correct some of those things, like the penalties, like you said, and um, you know, there's still things, even with these wins, that we really need to fix to get to where we want to go. But, um, you know, Coach does a really good job just moving on to watching the film, throwing it away, putting it away, and moving on to the next game. Like when that goes down and you guys are in a streak like that, you made the point, too, we're not used to losing around here. Do you guys have to step up and make big speeches and kind of make or point attention to it? Or is that just not necessary and you just focus on the very next game and it's not as big of a thing? 
Yeah, I think that um, you know we haven't we haven't had that you know one moment where uh, you know a guy would step up like a, a Tim Tebow moment back at Florida. <laughs> uh, we we haven't had that. I think it, it's just you know just part of being a pro. You know, having that mentality and being able to you know go out and compete every day. What about the so-called Tim Tebow moment? Like, this was a different breed of guy, right? A different kind of leader. Like, what was the Tebow moment like, or what was he like in that element? Uh, Tim Tebow, you're talking about? Yeah. Uh, so, he was, he was the, obviously, I, was, I wasn't there yet um, at Florida, but, um, you know, from, from what I saw and what I've heard around the program, obviously, there's, you know, statues of it, of that speech and everything like that. And, um, around the program, he's around the program a lot. Um, you know, and I think what you see on in social media is what you get with him. I was going to say, I, I should have referenced that. I was talking more about the legend. I know of course you weren't there, but just the legend. Yeah. I mean, it's always there. It's going to always be there. So I was kind of trying to get a sense of that, but I get it. We're talking to Alex Anzalone. You know, every year is different. Every team is different. Six games in, do you have a sense of what the identity of this team is? And if so, how would you describe it? Um, I think, like you said before, it's kind of we're a gritty group. Um, you know, we're not getting getting the pretty wins that you know we that make life easy and uh make going week to week a little easier you know we have things to correct uh here and there um but you know we're i think we're starting to get our groove a little bit and um you know hitting our stride when these these wins are starting to mean more and more as the season goes on all right so you've got the bears on sunday they're coming off that tough loss to the rams last night what are your early thoughts on that matchup and how do you go about attacking their offense yeah you know i think i Watched the game last night, and I think they have some playmakers. I think Nick Foles is a great quarterback. Obviously, he knows how to win. Um, you know, running back Montgomery, I've seen him play, uh, you know, for a little bit now in the NFL. He's a great running back, and they have some explosive receivers that can stretch the field, and also they can get the intermediate route. So, you know, it'll be a tough task, and, um, you know, we're up for it every game. Yeah, so what about Monday nights? I mean, you're going to play them, so obviously you're going to lock in and watch that game. I'm curious, though, it always seems to me that if you're playing on a Monday night, the thinking must be like, we're the only game, everybody's watching us, including our peers. If you're not playing them this weekend, are you locked in every Monday night? Like, how do you approach Monday nights? Yeah, I, th I feel like, you know, depending on, um, you know, what I'm doing, I feel like I, I catch myself watching Monday night football every week, and whether I'm watching super intently, like last night I was watching um, almost like I'm watching, like I was watching film, uh, you know, with the Bears playing, um, you know, but you, you definitely notice, you know, big plays. You definitely notice, you know, wow, this team's looking really good. This team's really clicking. So, yeah, I definitely take notice to it every Monday night. All right. No way did I have you on the show and not ask you about Sammy the Rescue Dog. How is Sammy doing? <laughs> he's doing well. He's, uh, you know, he's hanging out. He, he, that doesn't necessarily like the season because I'm not home a lot, but uh, you know he's doing well. Did you ever afraid that he's not going to know who you are when you come back? <laughs> yeah, that's always a big fear. Always, right? He's a linebacker for the Saints. He's coming off a game where he had four tackles and a tackle for a loss in Sunday's win over Carolina. New Orleans is four and two, and they are at Chicago on Sunday. Alex Anzalone, my guest. Alex, great to have you on. Appreciate you, and always appreciate you coming on. Thanks, Jim. Have a great day, Alex Anzalone. Always a quick yes, which I appreciate. Very much.